guess what, guys? Golden Studio is back. And this is one of my favorite moments from the Lincoln Crossroads Music Festival. It is a gorgeous August night in Lincoln. The sun is down and the sky is clear. It isn't too humid, a blessing for midsummer on the plains. And Hassan invited everyone to dance. Led by his family and Yazidi friends, people jumped up from their seats in the grass, joined hands, formed a line, and began moving in time to the sounds of Golden Studio. Golden Studio plays lots of Yazidi weddings and parties, but this is different. This is a concert, and the audience isn't primarily Yazidi. Just before this performance, Kenan Asma and a host of other visiting musicians played to the same crowd. Golden Studio had the spotlight, and there were some definite nerves I hadn't seen before from Hassan, Ziad, and Arkan. But by the time of this dance, well, you could just feel this was a moment of tension release. As more people kept joining the line, which included yours truly, I'm happy to say, it transformed into a giant circle in the courtyard. Everyone was smiling and it was a joyous moment for Lincoln and a triumphant moment for the first year of this music festival. As I was dancing, I looked over and I saw Eric Higgins. He looked ecstatic dancing and laughing. Maybe this was a moment of relief for him too. After all, this is his festival. Yes, Eric, I told you we'd have more about him later. Well, it's later. So let's get to know Eric. Double bassist Eric Higgins has played with the Handel and Haydn Society with the ensemble A Far Cry, which has been featured on The Verge here on NET Radio. And he recently accepted a new position in Denmark with the Aarhus Symphony Orchestra. Eric Higgins is originally from Lincoln, and although he's been away for about 15 years, he's planning on coming back next summer for a new project. Eric, glad to have you on the show this morning. Good morning, Genevieve. Good morning. This was on Friday Live about a year before this concert took place. Eric, with his longish blonde hair and blue eyes, he's very Nordic. And as you're about to hear, his voice is very calming. I like to joke with him and call him a Viking Zen master. Eric was on Friday Live to tell me about a project he was starting. This summer, but you'll be back next summer for a special project, which was inspired by a marketplace story that you heard about the Yazidi population in Lincoln. What is this project? Exactly. I, I've been thinking along these lines for many years. I've played a lot of chamber music festivals in the last several years, especially, and some of them were major sources of inspiration for this. That was almost a year before we started this podcast, and Eric told me about the moment later. I almost don't want to admit this out loud, but when I realized that I I called you and set up the appointment to go on Friday Live, I realized, oh boy, I really have to do this now. I need a name, <laughs> need a Facebook page. And it is such a resource, and they all have their music. And, and I thought, wow, that... That's, that's right here, and it's totally my jam. And <laughs> I'd love to find a way to work with those people along with people that I would bring in, friends, chamber musicians, to create a community environment where we could put on really interesting concerts that would be very unique to Lincoln. Well, it sounds very exciting. There of course, Eric was already jamming on the side with Hassan and Ziad whenever he was coming back to Lincoln from Denmark. And really... Those moments with Golden Studio are what inspired him to start a project like this in his hometown. When I first started talking with Ziad and Hassan, they said, we've never played our music for anybody else, but we want to, and we want to meet these other people. We want to share our music with them, and we just, we hardly ever do that. I want to know how Eric got so comfortable with going out on so many artistic and musical limbs. As Hassan put it, Eric just showed up at the door of Golden Studio to jam with them. A music and cultural cold call. 
And then he boldly launches a music festival in his hometown. As it turns out, the Viking Zen master is a bit of an adrenaline junkie when it comes to creative collaborations. These days, you don't only play classical music, though. No, I ventured over to the dark side about 10 years ago. It was during a time when I was playing in the opera in Hamburg, and, you know, there was a lot of repertoires, learning a lot of music, but I, I just felt like something was missing still for me. One of my neighbors had a brother who was in a band, and they were looking for a bass player. And for some reason, and this is really scary, I agreed to do it. And I showed up in a basement out in the suburbs with my double bass, you know, and it was a rock band. And, you know, they all had their, their two electric guitars and drums, and they, they stuck a vocal mic in front of my bass, and I just tried to play as loud as I could until my fingers bled, and of course that didn't work. But I, for some reason, I kept going back and I bought an electric bass, and, and I was in this uh, pop funk band for two years, and, and it was terrifying. It was absolutely terrifying at the beginning. Did you catch that? Terrifying. Not uncomfortable, not out of my zone. Terrifying. It seems extreme, but when you hear why, you'll get it. I say that because in classical music, or the way that I was trained, you can be so comfortable just by having all the notes. You have the notes, you know if you play the notes that are on the page, then you've done it right. Yeah, yeah. And so I would get there and I realized all that I could think of to do was play the roots of the <laughs> right. chords. Boom, 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 boom. And I thought, oh man, this isn't good enough. And I realized, why does this sound so awful? You know, I am this great musician, so I thought, and uh, I felt so naked. And they didn't, you know, there was no right or wrong note. And that was terrifying. As a classically trained flute player, I knew exactly what Eric was talking about. I'm a music reader. I'm not Hassan or Ziad, who learned to play by ear and by feeling. Improvisation? <laughs> not really my strong suit. I have extreme admiration, maybe bordering on jealousy. When I see someone like Daniel Martinez closing their eyes and strumming out music by ear, to them it's just natural, instinctual. And they'll even profess an admiration of my ability to read music. But for Eric and I, reading music can be a security blanket. And improvisation, as fun as it sounds, can be scary. And it seems like a code we just can't crack. So here is Eric, an accomplished musician, struggling with the type of music most of us listen to every day, like pop, funk, or rock. I sounded terrible, and I couldn't figure that out. And it was so humbling to realize, oh, I need to learn what the rules are. In the band, the rule is not whether you played it right or if you played it the same as you played it last time. The rule is, does it sound awesome? <laughs> does it sound awesome? Does it sound awesome was on Eric's mind when he heard a story on American Public Media's Marketplace about the growing Yazidi population in Lincoln. Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska has per capita more refugees than any other state in the country. Many of them are from the Middle East and often include Yazidis. And remember in the last episode, all those flags of different countries and the different languages spoken at Lincoln High School? Eric also read an article in the Washington Post about all the diversity within Lincoln High. All this while he was miles away from his hometown. It's interesting for me to, to think about Lincoln and you growing up in Lincoln and then doing what you're doing now. What's Lincoln from your viewpoint as Eric the kid? Like, talk about when you were, were younger growing up here. What was Lincoln like to you? Yeah, well, you know, anywhere you grow up, you just feel like it's normal. Everything is normal because it's the only thing you know. And looking back, Lincoln was a great place to grow up. I mean, there were so many opportunities. There were a lot of things that we didn't have to worry about. I, I really liked growing up in Lincoln. Of course, any teenager wants to get as far away from the place that they grew up, or maybe not every teenager. I don't know. Does every teenager? <laughs> I mean, not every teenager leaves. I didn't. 
Eric and I both think of Lincoln as home, but Eric's frame of reference has something that mine doesn't. Because he's lived in Boston and Germany and now Denmark, he's looking at our home through a totally different lens. Coming back to Nebraska, there's a lot of really cool things happening that are unique. And I can see that because I am coming in from the outside. And one of my goals for this is for people to understand that the qualities that make Nebraska great, you know, just being friendly, helping your neighbor, those things have led, and that attitude has led to just this thriving cultural mosaic. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting for me to think about because living here, it's not the same as your perspective, I think. I feel like it's when you grow as a kid and you don't feel yourself getting taller, but you look at the wall and you measure yourself and all of a sudden you see, oh, well, I must have because there's a difference there, you know, when I, yeah. when I make yeah. the mark on the wall. And so I, I feel like that's what you have. You can see the mark on the wall. And I don't know that i see it in the same way. Like it's all just kind of happened around me without me really knowing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the that's the gift of perspective. So it's my job, you know, as the one who can see it, to try to put it in a way that other people can see it too. The gift of perspective. It's almost like Eric sees it as a responsibility. And it took time for him to see that there is something special in this Midwest town in a flyover state. There's a lot of places with cultural diversity that aren't thriving, I think, in the same way that Lincoln is. And I want that to be a part of Nebraska's and Lincoln's identity. Other places have diversity, but not all do it well. It makes me proud of this little city that I love. And when I look at Eric's story, I see a lot of similarities with my story, not only with Lincoln and our pride of home, but also with music. We're both passionate about music. Music is maybe the defining element of both our lives. And yet our Nebraskan lives took very different paths towards supporting the arts on the plains. I appreciate how Eric articulates these values that we share, both in what he says, but more importantly, in what he does. Remember his rule from earlier, does it sound awesome? This simple sounding motivator, which comes from an addiction to creative leaps of faith, has led Eric to herald the sound of his home, the sound of my home. The Lincoln Crossroads Music Festival, Eric's gift to the city that raised him, is about changing how we see Lincoln and changing what the world thinks of the Midwest. As we danced to the music of Hassan and Ziad on that summer night, I got it. It was an amazing, awesome moment. Hands intertwined. A celebration. The music of Golden Studio, this is the sound of my home. And music, of course, is such a wonderful tool to connect with people. Brought a lot of people to Lincoln, actually, that had never been to Nebraska before. It brought musicians to Lincoln that had never performed in Nebraska before. Lincoln is, was starting to take ownership, not only of the festival, but what it represents. Communities from all over the world live here in harmony and thrive. Maybe it's a Nebraska thing, it's nothing's such a big deal, you know, but that's kind of a big deal. Lincoln needs this because Lincoln can be a role model for other communities. There's so many things that work in Lincoln. You know, when I began this podcast journey, I told you how fiercely proud of my state I am. Proud of my home. But maybe it was just a feeling. I didn't know how to put it into words. Lincoln is a role model for other communities. We can dance together. We can create together. And we can grow together. On the next episode, the last episode of season two, The Sound of Home, I take my flute and jump in where I'm not comfortable. No music notes, no music program, and start to improvise. The 
Plain Story podcast, The Sound of Home, is produced by NET Nebraska. I'm your host, Genevieve Randall. Our producer is Brian Cipherline, and our associate producer is Monica Starr. Our field audio is by Emily Kreutz, Nathan Todd Hunter, and Andy Bigham. We had editing from Alex Epperson and mixing by Nathan Todd Hunter. Our graphics are by Joe McMullen. Bill Anderson is our radio network director. Chad Davis is our executive producer. Special thanks to Golden Studio, Eric Higgins, and the Lincoln Crossroads Music Festival. See you on the next episode. Thank you guys for Thank the dance. Much, Thank you. Thank you. We usually do, do this for six hours, but uh, we thought it's going to be too much. <laughs> Thank you guys. It was, it was so amazing.